Uh, Mr. Phillips, you're recognized for three minutes. Thanks, Chairman. Chairman Buchanan, Ranking Member Doggett, and members of the committee, on behalf of the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, or ITAP, I would like to thank you for holding this hearing to evaluate the recently expired tax revisions, also known as the tax extenders. It is long past time for the tax extenders to be evaluated and either be allowed to expire or to be paid for and made a permanent part of the tax code. Congress's tradition of passing short-term extensions of these provisions has long been detrimental to the creation and maintenance of a fair and sustainable tax system. While a lot of excuses are given for this, the true reasons behind this practice are clear. First, the goal of passing tax breaks on a temporary basis is to hide their true long-term fiscal cost. While increasing the deficit for these tax breaks a couple years at a time may create the appearance of fiscal prudence, the reality is that their continual extension is increasingly costly and fiscally imprudent. Second, there is a problematic relationship between lawmakers and the special interest backers of these provisions. The former director of ITAP, Bob McIntyre, rightfully referred to the, the tax extenders legislation as the Tax Lobbyist Full Employment Act. We need to remove the special interests from the tax policy making process, and one of the most important first steps to accomplish this would be to end the tax extenders tradition once and for all. To this end, lawmakers should initiate a detailed analysis of each of the recently expired tax provisions at issue in today's hearing to determine whether or not they serve a compelling public interest in a cost-effective manner. If a provision does not meet these standards, it should be allowed to remain expired, and if a provision does prove to be effective, then it should be made a permanent part of the tax code, but at the same time, it should be paid for. It is critical to note that creating permanency in the tax code goes well beyond dealing with the tax extenders. Rather than clearing out the code of temporary provisions, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act has created a series of temporary tax provisions that are many times the size of the tax centers that are the focus of today's hearing. Some lawmakers may argue that the answer to this problem is to make all of the temporary provisions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act permanent. But the problem with this is that it would not make the tax code sustainable and would not guarantee any real permanency in the tax code. The United States faces a deficit of roughly $12.3 trillion over the next 10 years which means that current tax law will have to change substantially to prevent a historic increase in the national debt. Making all the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act provisions and other some temporary provisions permanent would make the tax code even more unsustainable by increasing the projected deficit by an additional $1.2 trillion. To create permanency in the tax code, Congress should embrace a real tax reform effort which would set the code on a fiscally sustainable path and end the use of temporary provisions. Thank you for your time. I look forward to answering any questions. We know that for years, large multinationals with armies of tax lawyers, lobbyists, and political action committees have exploited loopholes to strip profits out of America and have them magically reappear in some island tax haven. We've had estimates of offshoring uh, and tax dodging costing as much as $100 billion every year. The joint uh, tax staff uh, demonstrated that the Republican tax bill had no effect on this. Not only did it not raise any revenue by closing these loopholes, the Republican bill actually expanded the loopholes and added another $14 billion in lost revenue from these international loopholes. Mr. Phillips, I would ask you whether or not it's correct that the Trump Republican tax bill by establishing a tax rate for international investments made in other countries that is seldom more than half the rate that's charged for investments here in America and often may be zero, uh, and the second provision that establishes uh, an arbitrary 10 percent tax exempt rate on overseas tangible investments, whether all of that doesn't significantly increase the incentives for offshoring both profits and American jobs? Yes, absolutely. On the one hand, it, it incentivizes moving profits offshore because the lower rate means that companies, if they can shift their profits over there, can, can pay the lower rate. And then also, I think more disturbingly, is that it actually creates an incentive to move more jobs offshore because if you actually move those tangible assets offshore and actually make a new factory offshore, then you can actually get a tax break for that. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to all of you for being with us today. Um, I'm deeply concerned that we're sitting here talking about a host of narrow tax extenders. While, as noted, Republicans have in essence created a host of new ones in their tax bill that will impact American families directly. Um, Mr. Phillips, in your testimony, you state that, quote, if Congress were to make permanent all the temporary tax provi provisions today, 
fiscal reality will force them to overhaul the tax code again in a few years to raise more revenue, end quote. So let's be very clear. What you're saying is that Republicans and President Trump chose to give corporations a massive permanent tax cut, and they have now boxed themselves in a situation where American families will ultimately face a tax increase because someone has to pay for all the debt that's piling up. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. I and mean, there's no way we can sustain trillion dollar deficits into the future without raising taxes. Now, um, Chairman Brady just today said that the committee would consider um, um, actually, or his quote was that while the tax cuts for families were long term, they're not yet permanent, so that we would, uh, we're going to address issues like that. Um, going forward. So wouldn't that make the situation even worse, um, given the tax cut that's already been granted to corporations? Yeah, I think that the, the current tax cut has already made the situation relatively dire, and adding more tax cuts on top of that would be absolutely disastrous. So do you see these the same problems as we um, talk about tax extenders generally? Yeah, I, I think that they made much larger portions of the code um, temporary, and extending those even further is much larger than the things we're talking about today. So you would agree that we should be making decisions on um, tax policy and actually look at the long-term impacts of those decisions so that we are making smart decisions that would impact the fiscal situation for our country over the long term? Absolutely. I think we should evaluate each of these extenders, but I also think we should evaluate the much bigger provisions that are permanent part of the code. And wouldn't you agree for you know, long term, um, for the, the long term health of our economy, that making smart decisions today actually impacts families and businesses going forward um, versus making decisions that short term may provide a tax cut, but long term actually really make our economy weaker? Absolutely. And debt service is one of our biggest expenses, and this will only make that worse. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Lenders about a trillion dollars. I don't know if that's what it was. I think it's what it was. It might not be so much today because some few things have changed ideally, but I don't know if that's the true uh, case or not. But I think obviously we, that's, we want to look at all these extenders, make sure they make sense. I don't want to see personally myself people double dipping. I think it's more than fair that what's been put in place. However, there might be some things that do make a difference, but I don't want someone just cut their tax bill by a third and then coming back and say they need an extender uh, you know, a large corporation or anybody else or a medium-sized pass-through or whatever it might be. Mr. Phillips, you got to, uh, everybody, I'll give you a minute or two just to think about it. Are there any extenders in, that you've looked at that you think deserve some consideration? I'm sure there are some, but maybe you might say no, but I'm just curious to, as a wrap-up with the panel. So, so I don't have a strong opinion on the ones um, before the committee today, but I think that every single one of them should absolutely be paid for. And I think that if you're going to get rid of all of them, I think you have to look at some of the provisions that are actually permanent. And I agree with you, we cut the rate down to 21%, and I think that means that a lot of tax breaks that didn't get cut should be cut.